Okay, this is feedback for Yinyoru. There are two questions. I'll answer the second one first. Um, the second question was about the shadows on a skin. I'm not sure how to describe it, she says, or he says, but the colors look a bit off. It looks okay from afar, but when, uh, upon closer inspection, the cool greenish shadows seem to give the characters almost an inhuman quality. Could I get some feedback on how to choose colors for the shadows and how to make shadows on skin realistic? So you already did a great job by creating the radiance that is usually um, on skin, even when the lighting um, is requires a very dull, muddy color for the shadow. By adding this band of uh, orange at the edges of the shadow and highlights, and using a varied selection of colors like the much brighter uh, saturated orange -y color for the slight shadows that's on the highlights side facing the light and c compared to the um, actual shadows reflecting the very um, cool color green environments that you have. In this case, it's easy to think of, to zoom in and then think the color that you're using is really muddy or looks inhuman because once you zoom in you don't see the rest of the environment your eyes perceive only this and then your intuition inevitably reverts back to i can probably make this warmer and look nicer by adding more warm colors to it and the more you do this the more you deviate from the uh, original color setting that you have for it i think the skin looks fine like, you could paint a lot more if you want, just like how you could paint basically every picture a lot more if you want. But I think the biggest problem that might give you the illusion that this is a bad color to use for skin, despite it making sense, is that you gave the art a very good dichotomy of warm highlights and cool shadows, but you didn't do that for the line art, at least not much, and so there is a really strong contrast between the warm line art and the cool shadow of the arm. Instead of having, let's say, I get rid of this line art here. I'm just gonna get rid of the line art for like his whole arm and everything around it. Just so you can see the effect. I'm trying to do enough so that I can crop this area, ignore the rest of the painting, and have you sort of feel the impact. So when, when the piece is done more like this, when there's no warm... Like the, the, the line art's color gives sort of like an actual temperature warmth to it because it radiates so much and it's in the context of like being surrounded by cool colors. So in order for it to have that super um, intense, dark, but warm color uh, presence, it gives the impression that this is really warm here and anything around it must be really cool and cool is not really a color sorry a temperature that you associate with uh like life and skin but without it immediately i feel like the the contrast is not as stark it makes sense how this color impacts this color and especially with this giving context to where the light is coming from and how the skin color is in illumination it removes any doubts that this is skin belonging somebody who is alive even if say there is no highlights for example if his whole arm is in shadow covered up by his body due to the light environment it still doesn't uh like it still does not feel like it's too it's a problematic um shadow choice or like improper shadow choice when you look from afar you can tell that the uh, light makes sense relatively the color that you choose here has some peach to it and this sort of peach is the default sort of light color skin uh, tone and just by 
that little comparison, that's enough for people to infer what it is and get the feeling that whatever warmth there is here, it belongs to the life of the character that's being drawn. So it's these kinds of little things. I think uh, the reason why maybe you left the line arts us is, uh, is because there is this sort of trend to draw, not trend, but like, there's this way to paint. It's a painting style that does not really have line art to it, but there is this way to paint where you add these little bits of very intense warm colors in the shadows. Let me see if I can replicate it. Something like this. Right, you might have seen this painting style. And what this does is it adds those, uh, it adds uh, saturation and warmth, hints, hints of warmth in like overwhelmingly cool or desaturated areas to maintain sort of like a coherent look or temperature to the entire piece. Um, it's just that this when people do this, they have to generally they have to be very careful about where they put this. It can't be something um, universally applied without uh, discretion, such as line art. Because in this case, even if I choose to draw it in a line art manner, I would probably only put it in some places and not others. Rather have it be. Uh, all along the line arts, I would choose where it is allowed to exist without it having negative impact to the piece, such as making you feel like what correct colors you chose for the shadows is wrong. So I think this might be the kind of thing that makes you want to have this kind of uh, warm, uh, leave this kind of warm line art into the, the piece and just uh, understanding the origin of this look and the original intention of this looks, this look will help you sort of apply it to your own piece um, with reason without it uh, working against you. Um, so maybe, hopefully that would help you understand that, like what to think, how to think about whether or not to trust your intuition about um, color temperature or not. And the second question is the main issue, which is uh, incongruity of the entire drawing, it feels as if the character and the background don't really mesh together. Um, the question says, it looks like I took a cut out of the character and pasted it onto the background and even with a bunch of filters and overlays doesn't help. I also see this with individual parts of the characters. So for example, shirt, pants, skin, but to a lesser extent. Do you have any advice on making drawings look more cohesive, like everything all fits together in one piece? Uh, so the there are two things that I want to bring up. The major thing, the biggest thing um, is, well, the more general thing is the difference between the art style of the background and the foreground. Um, so it's normal to have it, to have a difference in polish in concept art and uh, illustrations, painting. It helps focus your attention, but not. It's usually done in the in a very grad gradated way, gradiented way, where the transition from detailed and polished to less polished is gradual. Just like how when you get your viewers uh, in your vision, you see something very in focus in front of you and gradually the attention sort of m melts away and you can't quite see things uh, in your peripherals. This change is gradual and so has uh, to, and so it has to be the case in painting as well. And that's not the case here because the separation is very clear. The foreground is painted and the background is not. Um, the background is fully textured and the edges are unclear. It has, uh, it uses shapes and forms and um, texture and uh, saturation and value and stuff to distinguish or like to give an idea what the texture texture is emulating is 
whereas for the foreground you painted everything meticulously um that's sets the foreground and background apart by a lot and then even um usually there is some point of contact it could be by proximity the character is in contact is in focus and so things close to it him should also be in contact uh should also be in focus um the point of contact could also be say the character is standing on the ground and that ground is where he is connected to the background and by relation because the char character touches the background here that this part should be in focus as well um, that's also not present so it's important to pick uh, a style that allows you to paint to uh, your greatest ability without c making you committed to the the same kind of impossible polish for something like a million leaves in the background um, if anything using a a brush that has more defined shape say instead of a leaf brush that looks like this with slight opacity changes which makes it blurry you have a leaf brush that has uh branches on it you have you make a leaf brush that has flowers on it and then you make several of these leaf brushes where some branches branch off to uh multiple multiple smaller branches some branches are just like big thick foliage make a few of these and then use them to definitively create some uh some shapes uh in this case i think i would do something like um very clear defined shapes of uh leaves not in black uh, but probably in a different color just like this uh let's see so even if it's something this rough and unpolished i feel like it already gives a gives the background um some sort of closeness to your character right and uh hold on Let's see. I can make it a little brighter. Okay, it doesn't help, but it's pretty bad. But um, anyway, even even this rough, it ha brings a closeness from the background to the character because just like the character, what I did versus what you did, what I did, my leaves have sharp edges. They have defined shapes. And they have a more a clear dichotomy between light and shadow, which is uh, a similar take to your character. And having this sort of bridge from your character, the character being in focus, the background being in focus, and then the background being out of focus helps tie your picture together a lot. So maybe this kind of... Uh, having this kind of brushes here and there same thing with the ground like you can have uh you don't really need to draw all of the dirt and so on and so forth just have some levels of color and then have little shadows of like rocks or unevenness that are on the ground before you fade into, say, more painted style. This kind of sharp uh, painting brings the background closer to what you have drawn to your foreground, on, on your foreground. Like, sharp grass, a few pieces of grass on the ground. Like, it doesn't have to be polished in a way of rendering, it just has to be polished in a way that you can see its edges. Um, and this by itself helps define your background in the same way as your foreground. And then the second thing, which is a, a smaller scale thing, um, and it would pertain to the character himself looking um, in cohesive, uh, like different parts of him doesn't look like they belong together. 
uh, or looks like a cardboard cutout pieces put together and that has to do with lighting so in terms of what i talked about before i unified the foreground and the background with texture i take whatever texture that's in front which is sharp edges and apply it in some way to the background lighting also has to uh has a big um impact on cohesiveness because lighting is a general thing it's the same light being applied to everything on your piece um, in the same way especially one object even if it's made of a lot of different things uh, if you can't apply that lighting if you can't apply that lighting in a way that makes the viewer think um, this lighting is falling on this object that is whole it, if you make some mistake that gives the viewer uh, the idea that okay this head exists in this light space while his uh, hair exists in another that's what makes something um, look less believable um, and so that would be the shapes of the lights and shadows being cast um, I think uh, you did a good job with the uh, separation of the hi the highlights and shadows. I think you could do more and be more bold in putting more things in shadows. Um, one thing that is in that is a big problem that we inherit from like a more anime style uh, is that we don't think much about environmental lighting. We think a lot more about like okay, how do I shade this tiny fold or how do I shade this immaculate hair? We don't think about um, the light, say cutting my entire body in half because my body is a cylinder sort of shape. So we feel compelled to add more highlights to places if even if it makes more sense for the entire figure to be in shadow. So in this case, I think um it would be it could be something like this. So his arm is behind Okay, he is standing here. Light is coming from his right. It hits his right half of the body. If his left arm is straight down from him, his body blocks the light, and so there should be no light on his arm. Maybe he's leaning a little bit forward with his arm, holding his sword, in which case then only the bottom parts of the hand uh, should be in light. And even then, I think with the direction of the light, you did the right thing by having only this little bit uh, being in highlights down here. Um, this would be enough. Not the whole arm needs the the whole arm does not need to be in highlights. And this little highlight here serves to give context to oh okay this is an arm rather than his pants, and also draw the viewer's eyes attention to the right side of the piece as uh as a uh, the highlights being a way to separate um this sorry the highlights being a way to separate this part of the picture from this big block of shadow that is necessary same thing with the pants i think yes the right side of uh his pants could be in highlights but what it could also be is maybe in shadow as well because um that helps makes him make him stand out from the background um and it makes more sense if the light is like it makes sense as well i guess not make more sense um if the light is coming down from the side and it's sort of already hitting his waist like this and um a lot of this area should be blocked because um say it's facing down I think um, a lot of this could be also up to judgment. It's like quite liberal. When I do lighting, um, the beauty of painting rather than 3D is you can make choices that don't that aren't 100% correct but aren't wrong either. Like it could be the case and as long as it looks good, as long as it gets your composition across, um, you can take those liberties. Um, but in this case, I think um, doesn't matter, like, now that I've drawn this in here, I don't think it looks very good. Um, but doesn't matter if... 
if this part of the arm uh, should be in shadow or not, whatever it is, his arm is uh, should be blocking a lot of the top part of his chest. Uh, definitely a lot of his neck. And then if he's either wiping his sweats or blocking the sun, a lot of this should also be in shadow as well. So it's the cohesiveness of uh, lighting comes from being able to feel, say, the presence of this arm on his head, being able to feel the presence of his arm on his shoulder, being able to feel the presence of his entire body on the rest of his body. Uh, once you can do that with your blocks of lighting, what people see isn't individual pieces of uh, clothing or skin or body parts. What people see is this whole person, us, a whole. And this half of him is in highlights, and this half of him is in shadow. And just by thinking of something this way, the viewers are automatically assuming that the whole person is one thing and therefore is cohesive. So that's the shapes aspect of uh, drawing um, drawing cohesively in terms of uh, making individual parts uh, look like they belong together. And then the uh, other aspect of lighting is, of course, the color. Uh, how the color of the lighting um, mixes together with the color of whatever it is that is shining on. So the skin, the hair, the clothing. Um, the shape of the lighting determines that, okay, this whole thing is of un one object, even if it's made of a multitude of different materials that reflect light a different way. So in this case, um, he is made of a lot of materials that reflect light a different, uh, in different ways. And um, it's important to uh, choose the color of the shadows properly, like you did. Uh, I think the best explanation that I can provide you is actually just a link, because I don't really know color theory that well, and I should not be trusted to give answers as to like how how colors mix together and which colors should be right where. But in general, um, trying to add shadow to different um, items is not as simple as just using an overlay of the color of the shadow on top of everything. So you might have to adjust individual colors. Um, in this case, uh, the skin, the hair, the shirt, uh, whatever you have uh, going on for your skin um, and the hair gives the impression that whatever the shadow is, the shadow color doesn't really have much vibrance to it because it makes the skin and the hair color duller when skin and hair is considerably more reflective, I think, than, say, a shirt. Uh, so if for the skin and the hair, the shadow makes them less saturated, duller, muddier colors than for the clothing, it would inevitably do more. Uh, but the color you chose here, for example, is for the blue is quite saturated. I don't know why. Maybe you eyeballed it, uh, but it could also be maybe you applied the same tone and that green tone kind of resonates with a cool color that is already cool. It doesn't detract from it and therefore a lot of the saturation is preserved and um, the saturation of this shadow let's see is it yeah the saturation of this shadow is like tremendously higher than the other ones which are more closer to gray because they're um well i guess not here either uh, they're closer to gray because they're green canceling out the warmth in the original color um so to make his, in this way, uh, making his shirt this bright blue color, bright but dark, sorry, saturated but dark color, um, you kind of removed it from the same lighting space uh, as the rest of the character. It makes it look like this shirt does not, it, 
the light that shines on the shirts does not look like it's the same light as the rest of the character and that makes it look like it's put together and so i think i'm not sure this is where i have to just uh try things out because i don't have enough uh knowledge to back me up so i think in this case i would definitely make it a lot darker um the value of the blues usually are it feels like they they're generally darker than yellows right i'm not sure and i would make it less saturated so that it matches the kind of um darkness that is present in the tone of the skin and hair and from doing this you remove a lot of brightness that feel like well i remove a lot of brightness that feels like it's not supposed to be there and so when i look at the shadow side of him i can think okay this really this green color this gray this absolute gray is peach in comparison to this shirt on him which looks to be blue even though it's also very gray um and it looks like this is uh just a darker version um some guy wearing a blue shirt uh us the rest of your piece the cohesiveness is there because the way the highlight and shadow contrast is consistent uh more consistent across different materials that it makes people think this is the same person same object and this light shining on him is the same light throughout uh, and then he's, he exists in the same space as the background because the background is also made of like the same kind of highlight contrast and texture edges and all of that. Um, so those are the things that you can consider when you're trying to make something look like they belong together. Uh, you've already done the rest um, really well, like painting in a way that is consistent across the, across the character, like he paints your your brush strokes and your treatment of lighting and stuff uh the texture that you like to paint with they're uh co cohesive and consistent across the character and being able to um shape your blocks of shadows properly sorry not properly consistently and being able to um use color theory and decide the how colors interact, sorry, how lighting interacts with the different materials and different colors on whatever that you're painting, and then being able to uh, identify whatever that's your painting style is for the focus of your object and being able to at least scatter some of that to onto the background to link it, link the foreground to the background, at least in terms of texture. I think those things will help you a lot in tackling your concerns. Hope that helps. <laughs>